One of the features I really like is the upright feature. It's really interesting. What it does is enables you to apply perspective adjustments, automatic straightening, and it even has some really unusual twists where when you really push it full force, you get this really interesting oblique look, which is actually really useful for 3D artists or even texture artists if you want to create a brush for your Wacom tablet or you want to create a texture if you have 3D models that you, maybe you're working in Photoshop or other applications. It's kind of fun. Let's check it out. Here we have some photographs that I took in downtown Minneapolis. And as you can see, we've got some extreme keystoning and distortions going on here inside this photograph. So we're going to go into the develop module and scroll down to lens corrections. You'll see it right there in the panel. And then you'll see we've got some different options here. We can do our profile, color, we can do our manual, and basic. And under the basic, we've got our new tools right here, our upright tools. So notice right now everything is off. Usually the best way to do it is first of all to enable the profile. So that's enabling the lens profile of the camera. And notice we got some correction, kind of similar to what we got in the past. But now we've got these other options. We've got four options here. Now auto, what auto does is it analyzes everything in the image and tries to create um, a very subtle but yet uh, much better than what you would get with the profile correction by uh, analyzing it and straightening the photographs but not so much that it's going to look overly fake. So let's just hit auto and see what happens. Notice as we do that, that cleans it up quite nicely. Let's hit the backslash key and you can see before and after. Notice it levels it. And it also straightens up these buildings quite a bit. You'll see that things are cutting away in the edge here, and we'll, we'll get to that in a second. Now let's look at the other options that we've got level. What level will do is simply just level here. Just like, a, um, so if we turn it off, you'll see it's tilted and hit level there. And what you'd see is it does is it just straightens it. So this is similar to just the old straighten tool, except it can automatically do that. It'll detect the horizons and straighten a photograph. It doesn't fix any keystoning or anything like that. Just simply is rotating the photograph. Next option is vertical. So here we go. The vertical here is looking to straighten up. What it does is it straightens the horizon and works on the vertical area of the photograph. Uh, by trying to fix the keystoning a little bit here. So if we look at this one before, and after, notice it's kind of done a pretty good job there. Now comes a really radical one. The full one actually looks at the whole three-dimensional aspect of the photograph and goes for a straighten, and you'll see what it does here, full. Notice how crazy that is. What it does is actually almost creates an oblique kind of effect. And I can see this would be really useful if you're working in 3D and you want to actually sample these buildings here and create textures out of them. So let's look at this one before and after. Notice that that's very, very radical. And see how it changes it says so perfectly straight on. We could grab these, start building textures, or use them for other kind of purposes. Typically speaking, though, the auto is going to yield the best results. Now, one of the things we have, too, is if we decide to turn off the camera profile, and it's there, and we can hit reanalyze, and what it will do is it will reanalyze that photograph without the profile. And if you turn the profile on later, we can also hit reanalyze, and that will also do that. Now, there's another option down here, because notice we get these areas cut away. Now, what we want to do is maybe we want to constrain this to the crop. So what we could do is we could hit the constrain crop uh, idea here, and then what it's doing is it's actually filling up the image. Now, I'm going to show you what happens by hitting the crop tool. By hitting the crop tool here, you can see what it's done is it's constrained it within that area, but it's also constrained it within the uh, same dimensions, the same aspect ratio that we're working in. So let me show you when we turn this on and off and we do different things, you'll see what it does with the cropping. So we hit it here, um, there, and notice you can see in the cropping what it's doing. It's cropping that so that nothing is cut off on the edge of the photograph. So when you've done that, you can still go in and play around with your cropping manually and get a little bit more space out of the photograph if you want. Another thing to bear in mind too is we turn the crop off and we go back to our uh, options here and we turn off the constraint crop and maybe we'll just reset it so we go back to the original. What if you want to actually see what's going on? Well, here's a little trick. If you turn on the crop tool, you'll now see the overlay from the crop and then we can go down and we can use our tools here 
and you can actually see what's happening now within the cropped area. So if that helps you kind of line things up a little bit better. And if we want to turn a constraint on. Now, if you want to tweak it a little bit too, we can also still go back under manual. And under manual, we have the options here to fix the distortion, which is the barreling and then pinching. We can change the uh, horizontal. Sorry, I said the vertical, I mean. And maybe bring it back a little bit because you still want a little bit of perspective so this feels real. Uh, you can play around with the horizontal. And of course, we can rotate and play around with the scale. And then another thing that's new is aspect ratio. So we can fatten things out or we can make them more skinny. So if a combination of these different tools here inside the upright command really gives us a lot more control over the distortions and the shaping of our photographs. And if you do a lot of architectural photography in particular, you're really going to find these tools incredibly useful.